Lights are a great way to dress a room for a party, especially if it has a spooky theme. And today, I'm going to show you how to make these little ghostly fairy lights. Now, the first thing you're going to need is LED battery-operated lights. It's really important to use lights like these because they have a plastic coating and they don't heat up. So you definitely can't use glass fairy lights for this project. To be safe, make sure you never leave these unattended while they're switched on. Let's get arty. What you'll need is a permanent marker, a craft knife, some ping pong balls, masking tape, some cheesecloth or an old bandage. I've cut mine into 10 by 10 centimetre squares. Some PVA glue, a container with some water, a paintbrush or spoon, something to stir the glue with, and an egg carton. And of course, the battery operated LED lights. Now for the first step, we're gonna draw some scary or cute ghost faces onto our ping pong balls using a permanent marker. So the first face I'm gonna do is a cheeky ghost. So I'm gonna draw the eyes as two upside down smiles. I'm gonna draw a big cheeky smile. So I'm gonna use one straight line across the top and then a half moon shape underneath. And then I'm gonna draw some big teeth because he's grinning. So you draw a few lines going down and then one big one across halfway through the smile. There's a cheeky ghost. Now for the grumpy ghost. Draw two big circles of the eyes. And what will make him really grumpy is drawing some eyebrows on. So do two straight lines facing into where his nose would be. And I'm not going to give him a smile, so I'm going to do a straight line for his mouth and then have two fangs coming out. And they're just two upside down triangles. Colour them in. There's one grumpy ghost. To draw the classic ghost face, use two small ovals for the eyes and one big one for the mouth. Now you need to draw as many faces on your ping pong balls as you have lights on your string. Now I've got 20 lights, so I need to do 20 ghosts. There's your classic ghost face. And there's my happy vampire. Now, if you have one egg carton like I do, you're going to have to make your ghosts in batches because it only fits four to five at a time. With your masking tape, just rip off a big chunk and roll it into a ball. And then place it on top of your egg carton. Make sure your face is the right way up and squash him on. And just repeat. There we go, last one is all secure. Now it's time to make our gluey mixture. Now I like to mix one part water and one part PVA glue. So it's like runny ice cream. That's when you dip in your cheesecloth, bring out all the excess glue, place it over your ping pong ball, because that's going to give you that really ghostly appearance. Now, this gluey mixture just stiffens the cloth, so it shouldn't really stick to anything when you're pulling it apart later. But you do want to make sure that your cloth droops down the sides of the ping pong balls and gives that ghostly appearance. Now, these will have to dry overnight, so they're nice and stiff, but I made a batch yesterday. They're already dry. So just pull him off. See how the fabric's all stiff? Now the next step is to get a craft knife and cut two holes at the top of the head in an X shape. Now make sure you have an adult around when you're doing this part because it can be a bit tricky and the craft knife is really sharp. Now just repeat all those steps until you have enough ghosts to cover all your lights. Now let's go and stick them on. event can really get the party started and your guests in the mood for a good time. But it can be a huge job and a big mess. So I've got a few tips on how to style a room that is sure to impress. 
start by picking a theme. Now, you don't want to rush into this. Get creative. It doesn't have to be your favourite TV show or character. You can pick a colour, a holiday or your favourite activity. And be general. Elephants may be your favourite animal, but if you pick them as a theme, everything will end up one colour. My party is witches and wizards because there are so many possibilities and the colours I've picked are orange, white, black and silver. Let's set up. <laughs> oh, oh, got stuck. OK. <laughs> that didn't work. Come on, tablecloth, be my friend. Tablecloths are a perfect way to tie your food into your theme and using a solid colour, in my case black, will really make your food pop. <clears throat> Testing. Testing. One, One two. 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 Music is really important to a party, but why not try noises? They really add to an atmosphere. If you're having a fairy party, you could play this. And if you're having a superhero party, you could play this. But for my spooky party, I'll be playing this. <laughs> Borrow ideas from other holidays or events. For example, sporting trophies and ribbons look great at a sporty party. And Christmas tree lights are fantastic at a disco. Spooky pumpkins are normally associated with Halloween, but they fit right into my witches and wizards theme. Just clump cheap pumpkins together I painted some black and white, covered some in spiders, and I've drawn a spooky face on with permanent marker because it's much easier than carving. Decorate with spooky props made by you. If they're simple enough, you can make a few. These are specimen jars. I recycled some old jars and got some new ones from the craft shop. Inside are creepy things like brains, eyeballs, spiders and snakes that I bought from a party shop. I just poured in some lime green jelly, refrigerated as per instructions, and they make a pretty convincing decoration. I've made about 20 candles because I think they look really effective in a big group. I've also hung them in clusters of two, three and five at different lengths. This gives them such a fun floating effect. Now it's time to lift them up and turn out the lights. Lighting is a great way to change the feel of the space. It can be as simple as using fairy lights or candles, or you can even change out your light bulb for some coloured ones with the help of an adult. You can get these from your local hardware store. Today, I want to add atmosphere, so I'm opting for mood lighting, keeping it dark and creepy. Food can really bring home the theme of your party, and you can get really creative with it. Let me show you what's on my spread. We've got ghost bananas, the face is just chocolate sauce, mandarin pumpkins, and severed fingered hot dogs. The skin is just pulled back to make the nail and the knuckles have been carved in. Hard boiled eggs we've turned into eyeballs using guacamole and red icing. Then we've got some dirty ear cleaners, but they're actually quite delicious, made from marshmallows and caramel sauce. And lastly, we've got a plate of worms. It's just jelly, gelatin and cream set in straws. And this is what they end up like. My final tip is to get your friends to help you out. And I have some very arty friends. Later on Get Arty, you'll find out how to make these projects, so stay tuned. Do you ever get told, don't eat with your fingers, use your cutlery? Well, here's a cheeky way to eat with your fingers, or Frankenstein's fingers. Today, we're making creepy cutlery fingers. I'm going to make a zombie's finger, Frankenstein's, and a witch's finger. Now, the things you're going to need are some paintbrushes, a black marker, air drying clay, a selection of coloured paints, a butter knife and a skewer, a couple of bolts, plastic cutlery, a bowl of water, some cling wrap, and a rolling pin. Now, first, what we're going to do is wrap this part of the cutlery with some cling wrap so it doesn't get any clay on it and you can eat from it later. So just when you cover the top part of the cutlery, you can stop right at the beginning of the handle. That way it will stop any clay getting onto the part where you're going to eat from. And while we're at it, let's do two more for later. Now to make our first monster's finger. Scrape it on a pin, 
and start rolling out the clay. You just want to flatten it out to get rid of any air bubbles because they might cause the clay to crack when it's drying. And if any bits start to get hard, just use some water to moisten it up and it's good as new. It doesn't need to be too smooth. We are making monster's fingers and they are a little bit scaly and bumpy. So first thing, we're going to make, what do you reckon, Frankenstein's finger. So we're going to place the fork down and the top of the handle in line with the edge of the clay. I'm just going to cut off some excess clay. So just going to wrap the handle now. And again, you can just use your butter knife to cut off any excess clay. Sweat your hands. So just press and manipulate the clay so it looks like a finger. Yep. Now, because this is Frankenstein's finger, I'm going to put a bolt through it. Just push it through the clay. So grab your skewer, and we're going to start carving in some details. We're going to do some wrinkles for the fingers, an outline for the nail. We're also going to give Frankenstein a scar. I'm going to give it three stitches. So Frankenstein's done. Let's set that aside to dry. So I'm going to make a witch's finger now. Give a slight point at the tip. So just pinch some clay off and just roll it between your fingers to make your wart. Grab your skewer. We're going to make a wart trench. It's pretty much just a hole for where the wart's going to sit. Just going to place it in there. Just grab some water and just seal off around the wart. And just to make it a bit more realistic, I'm going to put some dots into the wart with the skewer. Let's make this nice and gross. Now, using your skewer, just carve in the wrinkles around the knuckles. Let's give three. And then up here, just carve out kind of like a chip fingernail. Let's place it to the side and let it dry. Next up, our zombie finger. Now put it aside and let it dry overnight. I prepared these yesterday so we can go straight into painting. We'll start with the witch's finger. I'm going to give her skin a nice green complexion. OK. Just going to put it aside to dry. Next up, we're going to do Frankenstein. I reckon some silver paint. OK, just like the witch, just let it dry on its tip. And last, the zombie finger. We're going to go with a, a bronze colour. So with all the fingers, I've just put a base colour on. And once it dry, we'd come back to them and add a bit more detail with some other colours. OK, and just put it aside to dry. So now that they're dry, let's paint in some finer details. And set it aside to dry. Once it is dry, take off the cling wrap and make sure you wash the part you're going to be eating from. With the zombie, we painted in some black scars and some red blood spatter. With Frankenstein, a black nail. And with the witch, a black wart and a red and yellow nail. These are just some suggestions, so remember you can paint them however you like. Now the clay isn't edible, so like normal cutlery, only use a top plastic part to eat with. Plus, you don't know what spills and potions that this witch has been making, so I wouldn't trust her. <laughs> Doesn't this look great? Mm. <laughs> this wasn't on the script. <laughs> mm. Not bad. Want to create party decorations that scream Halloween? Well, look no further. This is what you'll need. A permanent marker that's black, and then some markers of various neon colours, some white balloons, sticky tape, scissors and ribbon. So the first step is to blow up our balloon. OK, I think that's about it.
Now let's tie it. This can be a little tricky also. And now I'm going to draw the pupil with my black permanent marker. And I'm going to draw it on the centre of the balloon. So first, draw a circle and then colour it in. So next, we're going to draw the iris. So first, create a larger circle around the pupil. I'm using a neon green permanent marker. Ooh, so squeaky. And do the same thing, colour it in one more time. This might take a while. Now, let's grab our black permanent marker and trace a border around the larger green circle. I'm just going to go over the lines one more time so it's all smooth. For a bolder effect, I'm going to draw some squiggly lines down from the centre of the circle to the border that we made. Like that. You can never have enough veins on your eyeball, so I'm going to draw some more on the white part of the balloon. All finished and ready to keep an eye on all you trick-or-treaters. Hi guys, I'm going to show you how to create this creepy coffin ponytail using real human hair. I'm going to be doing it on my victim, <laughs> I mean friend, Veronica. What you're going to need is either a brush or a comb, a hair tie, smaller elastic, bobby pins, hairspray, and a spooky toy of some sort that you can pull apart to put in the hair later. And of course, blonde hair. So I'm going to use the comb to just brush through the hair as Veronica has thin hair, getting all the knots out. And our first step is to gather in a low ponytail, smoothing out all the edges and grabbing any flyaways. Taking the hair elastic and just wrapping it around until it's tight and secure. Your next step is, and what you're going to do the whole way down, is just grabbing small sections within the ponytail and just wrapping it around itself. So we first want to cover the entire hair elastic itself. Always making sure it's tight and secure. Once you're at the end of that strand, grab your bobby pin and you want to secure it at the back of the ponytail so you don't see it. Just slide in it through with that last strand of hair and just keep repeating. Bobby pin and secure at the back. A helpful tip when buying bobby pins is to match the colour of hair you have. Veronica has brown hair, so that's why we're using brown coloured bobby pins. And you really want to just repeat that process all the way down to the end. When you feel like the ponytail can't get wrapped around itself anymore, just secure it off with a bobby pin and you can leave it as that. A good helpful tip for the flyaways is to spray some hairspray on it and just smooth it over with your hands. So that's what I'm going to do. And when you're happy with that, it's time to pick up your skeleton you've pulled apart. So I've got my little head. I'm just going to make a little parting section at the top and pop him in. I've just stuck the head in through the ponytail. That's nice and secure. And you want it sitting right where the first wrap begins. And I'm going to stick one little arm on one end 
just popping him in. And repeat it on the other hand. And for the two legs, they can be a bit tricky to secure, so that's why we've got the little hair ties to wrap them around. I just take them together, wrap it around a few times, then place it where you want it on the ponytail and do a final wrap. And I might take the leftover of the ponytail and wrap that around the legs just to hide it a bit more. And when you're happy with it, secure with a bobby pin. And your ponytail's finished.